body of Christ, I am talking to the choir this morning because we need to be, we are in a time of preparation to get ready for the harvest. And we need to be ready. And that means we need to be walking and talking and moving and being the word in this place. So I am going to do some uh, teaching, a word, an exhortation that is probably not going to be unknown stuff to you, but we just need to get it. I feel like sometimes we take for granted that we get a word, but then we just go home and say, oh, that was really good, and we keep doing what we're doing. But God wants to change us. He wants to change us into being more like him. He wants to change us into being who we are destined to be in this time and this place. You are here for his purpose. And this is a great and mighty time that he has called us to. This is not just a little nothing time. This is a change the world time. And I want us to be ready for it. So this is what I'm talking about today. And you're not going to like these words because I never have liked them. But I'm going to learn to like them because I need to learn to like them. I'm going to talk about submission. I'm going to talk about obedience. And I'm going to talk about discipline. Whoa. Hard words, huh? Those are not words we like. We don't like to hear them. We don't even like to say them. Because we grew up in a time of, fine, of independence, of saying, do what you want to do, be what you want to be. That was all the culture of the world we have grown up in. It is hard for us to understand how to submit. It is hard for us to understand how to be disciplined by those who are in leadership positions over us. It is hard for us to understand that somebody as old as we are or as young as we are, that we think we're, we know it. We don't need any of that, but we do. We do. There's a reason why we have apostles. There's a reason why we have prophets. There's a reason why we have teachers and evangelists and pastors. There's a reason for the fivefold ministry, and you know that. And yet somehow that's all gotten downplayed to being so unimportant. So, like, what does it matter? It doesn't matter that we have the fivefold ministry. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. And I'm going to read this out of the Amplified Version because the Amplified Version kind of just gives you kind of an expanse on what it's saying, and to me, it kind of adds a little bit more understanding. So if you turn to Ephesians 11, let me find it. Ephesians 4, I'm sorry. Ephesians 4, verse 11. And his gifts to the church were varied, and he himself appointed some as apostles, special messengers, representatives, some as prophets who speak a new message from God to the people, some as evangelists who spread the good news of salvation, some as pastors and teachers to shepherd and guide and instruct. And he did this. There's a reason why we have the fivefold ministry. We need to get it to fully equip and perfect in unity. Oh, church, we got to get this. Come on, hear it, hear it, hear it. <sighs> Fully equipped and perfect the saints, God's people, for works, works of service to build up the body of Christ, the church, until we all reach oneness in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God, growing spiritually to become a mature believer, reaching to the measure of the fullness of Christ, manifesting his spiritual completeness and exercising our spiritual gifts 
in unity so that we are no longer children spiritually immature tossed back and forth like ships on a stormy sea and carried about by the deceitful scheming of people ready to do anything for personal profit but speaking the truth and love in all things both our speech and our lives expressing expressing his truth let us grow up in all things into him following his example who is the head in christ from him the whole body the church and all its various parts joined and knitted firmly together by what every joint supplies when each part is working properly causes a body to grow and mature building itself up in unselfish love that is so loaded with what we need to know about this time and this hour. We are here in this time for his purposes. We've been saved. We are filled with the Holy Spirit. And we should never, ever want to be the same again. Our world is not the same right now. Our world has changed. And it will never, ever go back to the same. I don't believe we'll ever be back to the same, oh, same, oh in the world even. And we should not ever, ever, ever want to go back to the same. We want to be walking in the fullness of the Lord. Don't you want that? Don't you want that? I want that. I want it in this time. I want it in this season. I want it now. I want us to walk in the fullness. And church, we may be small, but there's a reason why. Because each one of you is here because he brought you here. You, he brought you here for a purpose for this time and this season. And you need to get ready. You need to understand that you should not be who you were Five months ago you should not ever want to be back there again ever you should not ever think that that was good enough because it wasn't because we need more we need more we need to walk in his truth we need to understand the fivefold ministries reason for being we need to submit to it we need to allow it to challenge us, to change us, to drive us to be more than we are, to rise up and be who we are in him. We need to have the fivefold ministry to bring us into that unity that God has called us into be. We are one body. We do not understand that very well because we all have this independent nature. We all think, well, I'm not... I don't know, I'm not like that person. But that's okay. You know, when God formed, and we know in 1 Corinthians, Corinthians, it talks about the body and how all the parts that are put in one body, they all function together. They're all in harmony together. They all work together so that you live in health, so that you live in function, so that you live and breathe the way you should be living and breathing. The parts don't say to each other, well, I want to be the brain. A toe's not going to be a brain. But if you want to walk down the street, you need your toes. And if you want to do something like walk down, walk somewhere or run somewhere, toes are good. And my brain maybe not function so much. So... He put every part of us into the body. Some pieces are not as loud and boisterous. Some pieces are not so seen so strongly. But that's okay. You still have a purpose. And I'm challenging you today, body of Christ. You need to figure out what you need to do in the body of Christ. You are here for his purposes. You need to know that you are here for service. What are you here for? You're not just going to walk out the door and say, oh, that was, a, that was pretty good, pretty strong, Kathy. Whoa. No. You walk out this door and you say, Lord, what am I to do? What is my purpose in this body? What is my work of service? What have you led me to this body for? Because I'm telling you, if you call this your church home, you better well know that you have a purpose in this body. 
And you need to stop sitting on the sidelines. And you need to stop saying, I'm just going to go to church on Sunday and that's enough. But it's not. It's not enough. It's not enough. Come on. Don't you want to be walking in everything he has for you? You're not going to do it by just coming on Sunday morning. You can say hallelujah and praise the Lord and walk out the door and that's the end of it? No. He's planted in you. He's planted gifts in you. He's planted abilities in you. He's planted words in you. He's planted truth in you. He's planted amazing things in you. And you have purpose in the body. So come on. Find out what it is. So... The other part of that is submission. Oh, Jesus, we need to learn how to be submissive. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. It is hard because it's hard for us to understand that we're not taught to be submissive. We're, not, we're taught to do our own thing. We're, ta we're not taught to, to submit to leaders and to authority. We learn how to do it. I'm going to tell you a story. Oh, my goodness. When I was in junior high, that's what they called middle school back then when I was that age, my best friend and I got into a huge fight that, not a knockdown, drag out, words, mean words. We were not nice to each other. And what that did is it divided the class. Our whole class was either on her side or my side. And one day, one day I was called into the office and taken into a room where two of my most favorite teachers sat. I loved these teachers. I just loved them. I respected them. And the women's counselor was there, a lady who was a counselor. She was an older lady. And she was just so, always so sweet and loving and kind. And the principal was there. So they start talking to me about this behavior that has divided our class. Well, I just broke down in tears. I swear to you, I knew not one word they said to me. I do not remember one single word, but I know that it changed me. Because I looked at them and I said, they love me. They care about me. They, don't, they know I'm better than this. They have expectations for me that are higher than this and better than this. And when I walked out of there, and I still don't remember what they said, but I know it was what they needed to say, it changed my life. The war was over. Warfare stopped. I was done. I did not want to disappoint these teachers. I loved them. I did not want to disappoint these adults that were put in my life to lead me and guide me and were so kind as to tell me that I needed to not do this anymore. That was not good behavior. So, so we come to submission. And I want you to go to Hebrews chapter, let me find my page. My husband said, are you going to do all of that? <laughs> I said, I don't think so. Probably God just does what God wants to do when you get there. So we're going to go to Hebrews 12, verse 7. It says, you must submit. Submit to correction for the purpose of discipline. God is dealing with you as with sons. For what son is there whom his father does not discipline? Then go down to, verse, uh, for, to 13, verse 17. Obey your spiritual leaders and submit to them, recognizing their authority over you, for they are keeping watch over your souls and continually guarding your spiritual welfare as those who will give an account of their stewardship of you. Let them do this with joy and not with grief and groans, for this would be of no benefit to you. I don't want Becky and Pastor Preston and Pastor Becky to ever have to feel sad 
or in the midst of groaning for us, in the midst of sorrow for us. I don't want them to wonder why we're, having, why we're not coming to them if we need counsel, why we're not seeking them out if we have something we need to discuss with them. We need to be honest. We need to be vulnerable. We need to go to them. We need to go to the leaders and say, I don't understand this. I don't understand why this happened. I, don't, I need to understand. We need not to be afraid to submit to them. They love us. And they were placed in that position because God put them there. So listen. We are called to be a part of this body. And I'm telling you right now, we need to figure out what it is we need to do because we're going to have people coming in this doors that are hungry, that are thirsty, that are wounded, that are scarred, that need healing, that need life, that need us to touch them with love and peace and joy and change their lives. We are responsible, church, for being full of him. We are responsible for being who he's called us to be. We are responsible, and we need to stand up, and we need to grow up, and we need to start being who we're called to be. Stop it if all you do is say, I'm going to church on Sunday. Stop it. Come on. We have to figure this out because we are going to have people that need us. So grow up. We need to grow up. We need to figure this out. We need to submit and we need to be teachable. Oh my goodness, teachable. Another word. We, we need our, new, our minds to be renewed. We need to be transformed into that new creation as we grow up and become mature in him and reach that unity and fullness in him. Come on. Yes. These are qualities which happen as we learn his perspective. As we learn his will and his way for us as the body of Christ. These are things that we're, gonna, we're learning even now, we're in that process. But I'm telling you, we need a fast grow up right now. We need a fast grow up, Lord. So, Lord, right now, I'm just speaking to each heart that is here. You see the cry of their hearts. You see their needs. You see their desires. You see who they are. You see their gifts. You see their abilities, and Lord, you know where they are going to be planted in this place. You know how you to use those abilities, how to use those gifts, how to use those strengths in this place to raise up and bring forth a harvest that has never been before. We are ready for a harvest, Lord. Prepare us. We want to be ready. We want to be ready for what you're doing. We want to be ready, God, for the, this outpouring of your glory. We want to be ready for the outpouring of all that you have. We want to be ready, Lord. So come on and do it, Lord. Come on and do it for us. Do it in us. Do it in us, oh God. Change us. Create a passion and a desire and a hunger to be all you've called us to be. Change us. Heal those places that need to be healed. Change them. Heal those places that have kept us from moving, Lord, from knowing your will. Heal those places that we have drug around with us forever and ever that we need to just let go of. Raise us up, oh God. Raise us up, oh God, and fill us with your glory. Fill us up, oh God, we want to see it. We want to be in it. We are destined for this time. You planted us here in this time, oh God, and we want to just do your will. Jesus, have your way. Help us to see, help us to want, help us to desire, help us to hunger. Lord, don't let us walk away from this without saying, Lord, I want to know what I'm supposed to be doing in this body. I'm here for your reason. Lord, that each one of us would just come and say, I don't know exactly what I'm supposed to do, but you do. So 
open the door, God. Open the door. Help us to be willing to serve. Help us to be willing to submit. Help us to learn how to obey, submit, and be one body. One body in you, Lord. One body. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah.